Leisure cycling is gaining popularity in China. According to the China Bicycle Association, in 2022, the income of bicycle and e-bicycle businesses increased 3% year-on-year. Their profits increased more than 20% year-on-year. And the upcoming Hangzhou Asian Games may take the cycling craze to a new level. The Asian Games feature four categories of cycling, track cycling, road cycling, mountain biking and BMX racing. What are the differences between these categories? What significance do the Games hold for the development of cycling sports in Asia? And how does the competitive level of cycling relate to the public's love for bicycles? I talked to David Lapartienne, president of the International Cycling Union, or UCI. The 19th Asian Games will start in day's time in the eastern Chinese city of Hangzhou. We know cycling is one of the first events um, to be included in the Asian Games as early as in 1951. So what are your expectations? Are you excited about the upcoming Games? Of course, uh, I'm completely excited, and uh, I know that the size is a very big size. This is one of the major events worldwide, even more athletes than the Olympic Games itself. Uh, and of course, cycling is the key asset of the uh, ASEAN Games. So very pleased and very uh, proud for my sport that with our different disciplines, will be uh, we will celebrate the sport uh, in, uh, in, in China and, uh, of course, for all the ASEAN countries. So how big um, are these cycling events for the Asian Games? I understand there are four categories. I'm not a cyclist, but I try to learn track, road, um, BMX. Help us understand a bit more what are some of the events and how big will the competitions be? It will be really big because, you know, uh, cycling is booming in Asia all all the, the national Olympic committees, they have a cycling federation. So cycling is really widespread uh, in, in the continent. And we have really top athletes riding in the world tour. We have top athletes on BMX. We have top athletes on mountain bike. Track cycling is also really, really important. We know uh, that uh, um, each Olympic Games, we have, for example, gold medal for, for China and for a lot of countries uh, in Asia. So for us to be part with all our disciplines in this program is really key. And our national federations are really focused they know that every four years, uh, this is really key for some of them. Some of them can't qualify for the Games, but they can qualify for the uh, ASEAN Games. So the ASEAN Games for some of them is really the goal. How special is the fact that the Games are being held in China, in Hangzhou, and it's a beautiful city? I mean, I'm looking at a beautiful skyline here. And uh, with cycling, you get to see the, the landscape, the city, the scenery here. So what are your expectations about the, um, the kind of fun and entertainment that spectators may get out of the cycling events? Cycling as and more specifically road cycling, we have really something special because you don't you don't have ticketing, you don't you can really go along the, the routes and to see the riders. So it, it's something free and it's a way to showcase uh, the landscape, uh, the city, because if you are in a closed arena, you can be uh, everywhere in the world, it would look like the same. But with road cycling, uh, with the helicopters, all the views, you can showcase your city, your landscape, uh, your region. So that's why cycling is so important for the local organizing committee, uh, for the city, and of course for China. How good are Asian players in terms of cycling? Because if you do a bit of research on Google, for instance, the top 10 world ranking uh, cyclists are mostly Europeans, with one exception of a Colombian, maybe. Uh, it seems that Asians are not there yet. Can we expect a world-class competition during the cycling events in the Asian Games? Yes, we, we really expect on road cycling to have more ASEAN riders at the top level. We have very good ASEAN riders, but not completely at the date of today able to win the top, top, top races. 
uh, but they have the potential to do this. So uh, with the, the calendar increasing in Asia, I think it will give more opportunities for them to compete. But the highest level today is still, I would say, in, in, in Europe. But we have now also some African riders at the top able to be world champion, also in Pan American continent, in Oceania. And I'm sure in Asia it could be the same. But if we take the other disciplines, uh, you have really top, top athletes, uh, BMX freestyle, um, BMX um, uh, track cycling. So you have really athletes to be uh, already at the top level and even world champion. But road cycling, not at the level exactly it should be. Um, and I understand you have been championing women's participation in cycling. For instance, a woman version, maybe a Tour de France. Um, how, why do you advocate for women's participation in cycling? And uh, what's the potential for Asian women? Women's cycling is really booming worldwide. In, in, in less than five years, we can see really the gap. We have now really professional team. We have world tour team. The level of salaries uh, has been really, really uh, nothing in comparison with uh, with uh, on, on the past. The average salary for the women now is seventy six thousand uh, US dollar per year, which is which is good, you know, at the top level. Uh, so and and um, of course for Asia there is also a, a lot of space uh, at this level. And at the UCI, we are also working, we have here in the UCI quarters, uh, a women's team with in mind not to have European countries, but to have talented riders coming from all over the world and to give them the same opportunity to reach the, higher level, the highest level. And we have some of them coming from Asia. Great. We're looking forward definitely to see that. I'm going to come to one topic that is slightly um, different, anti-doping. We know that the cycling world was very much um, a victim, let's say, of doping. But this year, there are new methods being introduced to provide doping that is more convenient, more reliable. There is more education for awareness to fight doping. As head of the International Cycling Union, what are your expectations and what can you tell us about that front? For us, it's, it's really key because I always say that credibility has no price, but it has a cost. And we spend every year uh, 10 million US dollars uh, to fight against doping, which is huge. We are clearly in front of the bench. We uh, gave, I would say, all our anti-doping program to the International Testing Agency. That is an independent agency created by the World Anti-Doping Agency and the IOC, uh, and, and we'll continue to do this. Uh, as, as you said, uh, the metal, it, it's always improving. Uh, so we always have to, to, to challenge ourselves on, on this, but we, uh, we really want to, we'll, now I believe that our sport is more credible than in the past. We were the sport of doping, we are now the sport of anti-doping. But with this in mind, uh, if you always try to find, if you check, you can find cheaters. Uh, we, the message we want to deliver is if you cheat, one day we'll catch you. Uh, and this is really what we are able to do. And we can see uh, a new face of cycling. I would say we can see real cycling. Some years ago, uh, it's true that uh, we were not probably uh, the, 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 the best sport uh, for the fight against doping. We are clearly, uh, we clean in front of our door, you know, and, and now we are clearly the leading sport. Everybody is, is taking example about the, what the UCI is doing. Well, definitely, I hope that this year's games will be a good, real, uh, true game for all the uh athletes. Um, I also want to talk about e-sport because that is a very popular section with uh, young people and you are also the chair of the ILC, the International Olympic Committee's e-sports and gaming liaison group. A very interesting uh, job. You know that the e-sports events for the Asian Games are the best-selling ones for this year's game. Actually, people have to get a lottery in order to win tickets. So what explains the huge popular popularity of esports and what are what are the things to expect during this year's Asian Games? Esports is really booming worldwide. The young generation, uh, they are on esports. 
and I'm the, the president, I've been appointed the president of the uh, IUC Esports Commission. So it's also key for the, for the IUC uh, to be connected with the young generation. And as you mentioned, we can feel the uh, enthusiasm for, for uh, following, I would say, all these esports events. And uh, for the IOC, it's a big question uh, how to involve without uh, losing our um, philosophy, that is to promote uh, with peace through sport. That means not to have esports or games uh, with in mind to kill the other people in front of you. So we have to respect the Olympic values. But however, we believe that there is a, a, a bridge uh, in between the esports and the sports community and we can feel that it's a great success for the asian games uh, so uh, we had a discussion with president uh, ioc president thomas barr uh, to find what will be our journey uh, regarding esports but probably a lot of opportunities also for the olympic movement this is very interesting and also out of my personal curiosity where do you draw the line of what is uh, physical sports and what is esports for instance if children are playing video games too much uh, how how are we going to tell them come on get up and move a little bit they'll be saying i'm i'm moving i'm <laughs> i'm doing sports <laughs> when you draw the line that's exactly the discussions we had with the ioc president is how we can also use uh, esports or the, the bridge in between to make sure that they will do physical activities uh, and that's important because uh, we don't want people or a young generation to stay in their room playing games all the day. Uh, so uh, we can we can really have uh, bridges in between in between the two communities, and uh, with in mind to, for them to also practice real sport, to go outside, to be in good shape, uh, and that's that's so key. Um, so yes, we believe there are a lot of opportunities. When we met with the esports athletes and with the IOC athletes. It was very nice to see that they have some time to face the same problems. Uh, so the stress, uh, to be in good shape before the competition, to sleep well, to be in good health. Uh, to And in fact, for the top of them, they practice sport activities because if they are not in good shape, uh, they are not also at the top level to play sports.